I'm very serious when I say the word I is the most Satanistic word in the entire world. And when you start living with I, you're going to go down a bad path. And then you're going to carry it over to me. And then it's going to be me, 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 me. And you're going to lose all the potential of love in your life. And um, you have to make it ours. Music has always been we to me. I've never wanted to do it by myself. Slipknot basically is the end all be all of my dream. I met, you know, I knew my bass player, Paul. I got together with him and, and we were like brothers from a different world. He grew up in Venice. He had been in and out of gangs, lived under peers, hard, hard, hard life. Whereas I went to private schools, spoiled, rotten, only child kid, these sorts of things. But when we were together, we were like the same person. We had the same outlook on the band that we wanted to create. I've put the pieces of the puzzle together that I've needed to, but all the other gentlemen that do it with me, they've done it too. So I don't want to discredit any of that ever on anything I do. So we start getting all these people and they all fit. They were all part of the piece of the puzzle already. And they just all start coming in and they all start coming in. And the next thing you know, we have Slipknot. It's about salvation with my brothers and there's nine of us, you know, so it's ours. It's not mine. I'm a part of it. I am a part of it, but it's not mine. It's ours. So that whole first record cycle, I put everything in my life second. I had no balance because I was on my selfish journey for my dream. And it's what I had to do. It's exactly what I had to do. And the next record comes along and that's when all of a sudden we're bigger than life, larger than life. Everybody in the world wants to know who came up with it. So they start dividing and conquering everybody. Start getting bandmates to go their own ways. The drugs and the alcohol start coming in. and The girls and the popularity and all the crap. And you know, Luckily, we were able to make the heaviest record of our career during the hardest of times and come out on the other side alive. I'm an only child, so I never really knew how to share. And I also never really understood the idea of doing things your way. You know, if I was in a group and someone wanted to do it this way, I'd say, well, I've sat in my own imagination for hours and I've dreamt it up this way, and I'm positive that if you follow me, we will get out of this burning building. And the selfishness is what's achieved my dream, but it's also the selfishness has, what has put what's almost, well, my parents are more important to me than my dreams, you know. Um, but it is that selfish journey that made me realize, you know, really what was important to me. Towards the end of my third record cycle, I lost my father. And I remember it in a very bad way because I had gotten off a tour and I was off for two weeks, two weeks. And in those two weeks, I saw my dad and mom once. So I went over, I saw my dad before I left, right at the end and we got in a fight, and I wasn't there 15 minutes. And I was out on the road, and I was in Toronto, and I got a call, and I was devastated. And, and that's when the two-hour rules start coming into play, because I start thinking to myself, wow, if I would have taken two hours a day for all these years that I hadn't been going to my folks, my dad and mom woke up early. I could have got my butt out of bed at you know, 7.30, taken a shower, gone over to my parents' house, drank coffee with them, hung out with them until 10 o'clock, come home, and had the rest of the day to do whatever I want, feel good about myself. But instead, I slept till noon, you know? And I started realizing, wow, all it would have taken was two hours a day. Just two hours a day. Because it's when you're older, when you all start getting these ideas of looking at your parents and they all of a sudden slip a little bit and you're like, whoa, dad's getting older. And you just never saw that coming. So instead of running and hiding and not dealing with it, it's just so much easier to go, you know what? I know that my dad would love spending two hours with me today. So the fourth record comes. Next thing you know, number one record. And then I'm in Toronto and the phone is just blowing up. I'm like, I'm not answering the phone for anyone. Finally, my wife calls me seven times, and I pick it up, and she's like, your mom's dying. 
And she's like, you got to come home. My mom had Alzheimer's and dementia. So I came home, and I spent four days with my mom, and she passed. I got this two-hour rule, but here, my mom's passed, and I didn't even go see her for that many years while she was in the hospital because I was too afraid. I didn't like looking at her like that. I couldn't handle it. That's what I convinced myself of. I had a hard time being with her. But looking back now, I should have just sat there and held her hand and read Dr. Seuss books, showed her pictures of Rembrandt, and said, thank you. Doesn't matter if you're there or not, I'm here. I'm gonna spend these two hours. So I have severe regret by not living by my own rules. Two hours a day. You know, you start with a minute. It, you take it a minute at a time, but two hours gets it done. You know, two hours puts a smile on your face and it puts a smile on other people's face. My bass player, as most of you probably know, he passes. It's almost, you know, it's going on two years and he and I started the band and it was actually harder losing him than it was my parents because um, I was always prepared for them to die. I would have never imagined he was going to pass. You know, I thought we were going to be old mates for a long time talking about this. We started the band together, so we were always on each other's backs. He kept me in check, and I kept him in check. And he was like, your ego's out of control. You better da 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 And I'd be like, go to hell. Da, da. And then I'd be like, you, you're doing this and that. And we just kept each other in check. But what we didn't do was hang out in our hotel rooms and just watch a new movie. Get a couple drinks, get some room service, no talking, just spending time together. Now he's gone. And I think, God, this whole time, man, the guy I started the band with, I never took any time to just be his friend and put Slipknot aside for a moment and just go, yo, man, you want to go to a museum? What do you, what do you want to do? You want to go get a steak? What, what do you like? I like to go check out churches. You want to come to a church with me? They're beautiful. I never did that. You know, we all need time. We're all hurting in different ways. And we're not at all just ready to get together um, because you can imagine what that next record's gonna be about. And you cannot make that contrived. You cannot push that. You know, if we wanna make a song about Paul, the worst thing we could do is just all get together tonight and say, let's make a song about Paul. No, I'm still thinking about it. I, I haven't even begun. His tombstone still isn't in the ground yet. You know, I don't have peace yet. When there's a tombstone placed on the ground, you know, that'll be another step to, to losing this grieving, you know? But, you know, I, there's lots of things, you know? I mean, he's got a daughter, man. You know, I think about it every day. He died before even seeing his own child. That, for someone like me, I can't spend too much time thinking about that. Being alive, knowing you're gonna have a baby, and then being gone, you know? I, I, I miss him, you know, and I, I'm so sad, you know, and it hurts, so I need more time. We all do, and it's not about me. We all have our different ways, but there will be a day we'll all chalk it up and go, feeling good, it's time to, it's time to do this, and we'll know, you know, and it will happen. It definitely will happen, you know, guaranteed it will happen. It's just not when everybody else wants this to happen. And in the grand scheme of life, It'll all be great because when it does happen, it'll just be like a flash of an eye and it'll be our best record to date because it's going to come from somewhere we haven't been yet. So it's going to be some serious, serious stuff.